and welcome to this video where we're going to look at a common type of exam question which requires you to identify unknowns. This sort of exam question generally requires you to in some way develop a method to identify some unknown compounds, maybe figuring out a structure from results, distinguishing between pairs of structures, that sort of thing. To answer this sort of question, you really need to be familiar with some of the common observations, which includes things like colour changes, gas production, etc., which come with certain reactions. You need to be familiar with the basic solubility ideas, and you need to be familiar with some key reactions. So without any further ado, let's have a look. Okay, Probably the most useful one often is actually water. You can always consider solubility because even if you haven't been given water as a reagent specifically, what you will have is aqueous solutions, permanganate, dichromate, bromine water, those sorts of things. They are all aqueous solutions, carbonates, whatever. And so they will react with water. Well, aqueous solutions have water in them, so these reactions will happen. So it's important to be aware that if you have alcohols, amines and carboxylic acids that are relatively short chain, by that I mean less than five carbons, then they will be soluble in water. Pretty much all of the other organic compounds, so haloalkanes, um, haloalkanes, alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, they all float on the water. Well, haloalkanes sink, but they all form two layers because they are immiscible, they don't dissolve in water. So that can be a really quick way to distinguish between things. Litmus paper is another great one because it will change colour depending on pH. So you can identify a carboxylic acid because it will turn blue litmus red. You can identify an amine because it will turn red litmus blue. And you can also identify any reaction where HCl gas is being produced because you can hold some litmus paper above that test tube and the presence of that HCl gas will change the colour of, again, blue litmus and make it go red. So litmus paper is really useful. If you're given metals or carbonates, then they are a quick way to identify an acid. So carboxylic acids react with metals to produce a salt and hydrogen gas. You can identify the hydrogen gas using the pop test or um, a carboxylic acid plus a carbonate or a hydrogen carbonate will make a salt plus water plus carbon dioxide gas. So you've got these bubbles of gas in both cases. Bromine water is fantastic. It is used to identify the presence of a double bond or a triple bond, particularly in alkenes and alkynes. Um, the bromine water goes from orange to colourless, and it undergoes an addition reaction. Now, alkanes and other alkyl chains will react with bromine water, but really slowly, and it requires the presence of UV light. This is not a way to identify an alkane, because this reaction is so slow. And every alkane chain, so if you've got a halo alkane, then the alkane part of it will react with bromine water. If you've got an alcohol, then the chain part of it will react with bromine water. Everything that has a carbon chain will react with bromine water slowly over time in the presence of UV light. So that's not diagnostic. Okay, um, permanganate is great in acidic conditions. Purple permanganate reacts with primary alcohols and it produces a carboxylic acid. Secondary alcohols will also react. It forms a ketone, which is a functional group that you don't need to be aware of at level two, but you should be aware that secondary alcohols will react. In neutral conditions, permanganate will react with an alkene, forming a brown precipitate. And the alkene forms a diol. Now, alkenes will also react with acidic permanganate, but the product is not a diol. It makes permanganate not particularly useful for distinguishing between alcohols and alkenes. If you want to distinguish between alcohols and alkenes, 
either use bromine water or use dichromate. Now, dichromate has to be acidified, and when it reacts, you have to heat it as well. It won't react if you don't heat it. The orange dichromate will turn green, so that's the observation you'll expect to see, and it will react with both primary and secondary alcohols, just like permanganate does. The primary alcohol forms a carboxylic acid. The secondary alcohol forms a ketone, which is a product that you do not need to be aware of, but you should be aware that it does react. Okay, so let's have a look at a common exam question. This one's come out of the 2018 exam. So, three more unlabeled bottles of colorless organic liquids are known to contain hexane, hex1ene, and ethanol. Write a procedure to identify each of these liquids using only bromine water and water. In your answer, you should explain any observations that have been made. You do not need to include it. Equations. Now, a few things to note in here. The first thing is that the statement says, write a procedure. That's what you have to do. You have to give a procedure. So you have to be able to identify those three things. Now, we've got three compounds, hexane, hexene, and ethanol. So the first thing you need to do is ask yourself, what functional groups are these? Hexane is an alkane, hexene is an alkene, and ethanol is an alcohol. So what, what do we have? We have bromine water and water. Now, whoever wrote this question was pretty dumb, because you actually can do the whole thing using only bromine water, because it's got water in it already. So, let's have a look at how your thinking might work. Well, this is how my thinking works anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here, if we start with bromine water, if we added all three things to bromine water, what would we expect to see? Well, the hexane, you're going to get two layers. In UV light, it might very slowly decolor, so it's going to go from orange to colorless, but it's going to be very, very slow. Hexene. Again, you're going to get two layers, but when you mix those two layers up, then you'll very quickly go from orange to colourless. Ethanol, you add them together. Ethanol is soluble in water, so it's going to mix in really quickly. It will stay orange, but over time, in the presence of UV light, that orange colour might slowly fade. Okay, so that's the thinking that you need behind it. To write a procedure, you're going to need to give step by step instructions. So step one, put a sample of each unknown liquid in a separate test tube. Step two, add bromine water to each of them. Step three, observe what happens. Okay, then in your answer you should explain any observations that you would make. So the hexane will form two layers with the bromine water because hexane is not soluble in water. The hexane may react very slowly with the bromine water over time in the presence of UV light as the bromine water reacts with the alkane in a substitution reaction. The hexane will form two layers with the bromine water because it's insoluble in water, but when you mix it up, very quickly it will turn from orange to colourless. It will do this because the hexene undergoes an addition reaction with the bromine. The ethanol will mix into one layer because ethanol is soluble in water. There will be no colour change because alcohols don't react with bromine. End of story. That's what you need to put in your answer. And it's how you would go about structuring it. Doing a quick little mind map to start is a great way to just get your brain thinking about things so that you can produce that sensible answer that is logical and well thought out. Okay, I hope you found this useful. Please do have a look at some of the other example questions out there. 
and see what you can do with them. I'll see you in the next video.